Blessed is the coming kingdom, Hosanna in the highest. Welcome to our service of parish worship for Palm Sunday. reading for Palm Sunday is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. When Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go to the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the streets. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people had spread their cloaks on the road 
and others had spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, and as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Blessed is the coming kingdom. Hosanna in the highest. We now come to dedicate our palms and our Palm Sunday prayer. God, our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We pray together a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eva is going to lead us in our time of confession. Let us confess our sins to God. His steadfast love endures forever. We confess that we have sinned, and although we would like to deny it, we have forsaken you. We are horrified by the suffering we cause to you, ourselves, and the world you have created. Open the gates of your forgiveness and restore us in your love. For the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We share in the declaration of God's forgiveness. The Lord God helps us. We will not be disgraced. The Lord God helps us. Who can declare us guilty? Sisters and brothers, beyond the shadow of doubt, our sins are forgiven. By the mercy of Christ, let us stand together, forgiven and free. Amen. Just recently, I went along to a seminar on leadership development, and as part of that, there was a presentation on the work of the psychiatrist Carl Jung. Jung did a study on the ego, which has now heavily influenced the fields of psychology and psychoanalysis. And Jung said the ego was divided into two parts. There was an aspect called our persona, which contained all the positive aspects of our personality, those parts of our personalities uh, that we project happily out into the world, that we might be proud of even. And then there's another side, what Jung termed the shadow side, that contains all the darker parts of our personality, those parts that we try to keep hidden, that we might not even be aware of, in fact. Aspects such as anger or jealousy or resentment or malice. And I, I thought of that seminar and that presentation when I read the Palm Sunday reading a couple of days ago. Because actually we see that aspect of shadow within the reaction of the crowds, don't we, as we go through Holy Week, on Palm Sunday, the crowds are euphoric, they're positive, they're excited, they're acclaiming Jesus. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he enters into Jerusalem. But as they become increasingly disgruntled and disappointed over the course of Holy Week, the mood shifts that shadow side emerges and by the end of Holy Week they are calling for his crucifixion, calling for his death. 
this week is very bleak. So what is there of hope in this week? The one who rides into Jerusalem is the one who says, Lo, I am with you always. So whether this Holy Week, whether this Palm Sunday we can wave our palms, whether we can have a procession, whether we can wash feet on Maundy Thursday, none of that matters. That is ritual, that helps us remember. But the fact that we cannot do that this year, the fact we were not able to do it last year either, does not matter. What matters is that Jesus Christ is with us always. And he's with us always because of what happened in this week, 2000 years ago. That he journeyed from Palm Sunday through Holy Week to the horror, the shadow side, the darkness of the cross through death and hell and resurrected came alive again on Easter Sunday through the power of God and offers us new life, new life in relationship with God, new life with hope of eternal life to all who believe. So if the world feels a dark place for you at the moment, if you feel that shadow side within yourself, within society, within the world around us, take heart. Because Jesus tells us we will have troubles in the world, but we follow the one who has overcome the world. So do join us this Holy Week. We have reflections each day that will help you journey with Christ through Holy Week. And over the weekend we will have St Mary's Church open on Monday, Thursday evening from 7 till 8 and on Good Friday, Easter Saturday and Easter Sunday from 11 in the morning till half past 12. Do come in, do pray with us, do celebrate Easter with us. And may you feel God's blessing with you powerfully this Holy Week and this Easter season. Amen. Jesus suffered death and rose to glory for the life of the world. Let us lift up our hearts to God in thanks to God and pray for the cares of the world, saying, Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Holy God, your Son humbled himself even to death to show us the power of loving service. Guide those holding positions of power that their decisions give rise to the mutual flourishing of the world you so love. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Healing God, your Son is betrayed and crucified in our violent world each day. Raise us to a new and rightly ordered world through the reconciling love of Christ, where all victims of violence, persecution, shame or terror may stand together with you in peace. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Forsaken God, as your son suffered his cruel death on the cross, darkness covered the whole land. Enlighten us to care for your creation. Awaken us from our denial and abuse and help us to alleviate its suffering. Save us, O oh Lord, for your mercy is great. Grieving God, your son consoled others in life and in death. We pray for all who are distressed, broken or sorrowful, that together with Christ in his suffering, we may be healed and raised in you. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Eternal God, your son was lovingly cared for as he was laid to rest in a tomb. We remember before you those who've died 
and pray for those who will die today. Enfold them in your love that they may rest and rise with Christ forever in his light. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We ask all this in the name of Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. True and humble King, hailed by the crowds as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Bringing our prayers and praises together into one, we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him in the way of his cross. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>